I know things you never see. You never see someone taking a shit while running at full speed. Come on, Key, get rid of some of them turds in the shit box. Welcome to the Bathroom Break Podcast with me, Rab himself. Hello and welcome to the Bathroom Break Podcast with me, your host, Rab himself. I got a special guest today. My guest is magician Chris Oberlay. He uh, was seen on such shows as Sci-Fi's Wizard Wars and Don't Blink. Um, dude, magical dude here yeah, in the, uh, <laughs> on yeah. the Bathroom Break Podcast. This This whole weekend has been like... I mean, you went in spread eagle in the magic world, bro. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> so, definitely got spread eagle. Yeah. We, went, we went to the Magic Castle, and uh, my friend Eric Jones's uh, show, he was on America's Got Talent, yeah, semi-finalist. Dude. And, and yeah. yeah, man, so it's like a whole different, different world of stuff (laughs) dude i got sucked into the magical vortex uh, the the spread eagle magical vortex (laughs) yeah yeah dude it was awesome i mean um i I met you a while back um it was actually at your engagement party it Mm -hmm. was at like a recording studio and there was a bunch of dudes doing magic all around there and we had um we had my we have a mutual friend benji which you have to have him on the podcast he's like awesome yeah um but he was like yeah man i'm bringing over a friend and I didn't even know who it was, and you showed up, and I started doing magic for you yeah. and, and everything. And, <laughs> and Dude, yeah. and, and blew my mind. It, it was just uh, insane. Like, I, I feel like uh, it's it's probably pretty easy to blow me away with magic because it, it's crazy. I, like, like last night when we were at the Magic Castle, I was telling you probably like I feel like a hundred times I had my mind blown, and I felt like I blacked out or something because I'm right. like what the hell just happened <laughs> right know? right and you're like and you you're like trying to pay attention like what are they doing what sleight of hand tricks are happening that i'm not paying attention to that is the reason why i can't understand it and you're like i'm just blown away by how good the tricks are yeah. and uh and and yeah man it's it's uh it's cool to get into that world i i know um the guy eric that you're uh, buddies with we saw him do this trick with a ring where he like got the lady's ring in the audience and then yeah and somebody then was ended up a in box. this yeah, box so, that was like yeah. way over and it was and it was on a chain like hooked on a chain right. and i was like what the fuck yeah man like I, I mean it's just it blows me away because you go okay like if you had that in your hand and then you tried to how the hell did you get it hooked onto that chain, you yeah. know, in the time? I mean, it's just really, really awesome um, how that kind of works and that's, out. And that's the reason why why I like doing what I do. I mean, we went to a stage show yesterday, and that's like a whole different different world. And, and like a, a background on me, like I worked for David Copperfield in Las Vegas uh, for two years. I was his main camera operator and uh, illusion specialist, creative associate yeah. and everything. And I remember going to his show as a kid. And my mom would bring me to his show, and I was, like, freaking out. Like, he made a car appear on stage. I remember telling you yeah. that last night. And then, you know, when I started working for David, we had to sign, like, a non-disclosure. You know, you can't talk about anything. And um, I remember s- figuring out how that that uh, trick worked. And I was like, really? Really, dude? Like, that's how it worked? And there's, like, on stage, there's so much more that you can hide. But what I do is, like, close up. So yeah. when we went to the Magic Castle last night, I mean, these people are doing stuff inches from your face. You could look anywhere. Yeah. And, um, and we met our friend, my, my friend, uh, Danny Garcia, who's the lead consultant for David Blaine, creates all of his effects. And he did a couple tricks for you. And you're like, man, like, this is like crazy. It was insane. Like, I, I, he, he had the Seven of Diamonds, like, show up in his wallet. Yeah, like, dude. It like, was, and it was as I'm fair. holding it. Yeah, and it was like, super was, fair. Like everything. Like you had the deck, you shuffled it. I don't you even know the how the heck out. he had a moment to get it. Right, like, right. I and 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 he does stuff that like fools you nonstop, like, dude. <laughs> yeah, I was like scared a little bit, right? Because it was like, what the hell? Like if you wanted, you could have took taken everything out of my pocket, right? And I wouldn't have had any idea, right. like. I have no idea how that happened. I I was holding the deck. I shuffled the deck. I found the, the card. Put, he never even saw it. And then I put it in the thing. And then all of a sudden, he's like, hey, 
uh, spread out the deck. So I, he's, I spread it out and he goes, just look in there and, and you know, you're, you're imagining that you're not seeing the card. And I was yeah. like, I'm not seeing the card. And then he just like reaches into his, his wallet and then unfolds his wallet and it's in the wallet. Yeah, and dude. I'm like, what the fuck? Like, I, I don't know how it's crazy. Cause because there's never the wallet, a time the where the wallet he was in it. full view the whole entire time. Yeah. From the moment you, you, you know, took the card out. And yeah, everything, that, everything and he never touched the fair, card. And that's the thing that, like, messes people up, <laughs> you know, is, like, we get all asked the questions, like, what if? You yeah. Know, what if I chose a different card? What if I, you know, did this or that? But with you, with, with, with Danny, yeah, it's super fair. Yeah. You know, same thing with, with Eric. Eric was on um, America's Got Talent, and, and um, he'll do some stuff for you tonight and maybe after the show Yeah. and stuff. But you'll see, like, I mean, Eric's one of the top – creators and and uh performs all the time he's doing a show right now uh traveling the u.s um called eric jones impossible doing all these shows that i pick and um and it's a great show and you know everything's on camera and yeah. you could look anywhere and it's like just fooling you over and over and over yeah. again yeah it's crazy you know and that's the thing like with me is that's how i got into magic like my dad um when, when I was little, um, you know, I would go say goodnight to my dad. And my dad had, you know, like the guillotine, like back in the yeah. you know medieval times, the head choppers, you know, they'd yeah. chop them off. He had this little miniature one, and um, and I would, he would have me put my finger into that, and there was this like super sharp thing. But first, he would like, you know, cut a pencil with it. And yeah. He was like, put your finger in there, bro. And he bro. didn't say bro. I don't know. I, yeah, I love put your dad finger in there, son. <laughs> right? You put your finger in there, and uh, and the the thing would go down and go through my finger, and it wouldn't cut my finger, and the whole thing was examinable and everything. And and he never told me how that was done. And yeah. when he passed away, like I ended up getting the the guillotine and and you know figuring out how to wor- how it worked, and that was like the the kick that got me going to, you know this madness of, of doing magic and stuff. Okay, so, so your dad was a big influence yeah, on my how dad you got a, into it. Yeah, my dad was a big influence, and then seeing, like, David Blaine on, on TV and and everything. And that's that's the thing is, like, I wanted to be the most interesting guy in the room. So when I go to a bar, you know, there's guys that look ten times better looking than me. And, like, <laughs> you know, like, um, you know, I was a super shy guy growing up. So the moment you walk into a bar, if you want to meet a chick, got to be a hot dude. Yeah, you got to be, yeah, a hot (laughs) dude. But like a lot of hot dudes. Yeah, right. And so, (laughs) so for me, it, it, you know, doing something that's that's crazy, um, that's completely different. You know, that makes me the most interesting guy in the room, and and that's like you know how I'd start talking to people and and um and learning how to talk to people and everything so so yeah and then you just started pulling out these magic tricks right and, right uh, yeah all of a sudden their panties are in your hand right 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 yeah yeah <laughs> like, but now but now you know i'm married so like i have to control myself but, yeah yeah yes you know sure. so well not with her right right yeah so but it was crazy like uh here i'll show you something real quick um and uh here, we'll do this um so all, all these cards are are mixed yeah you can see yeah. that yeah um what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through through the deck, and I, and I just want I want you to say stop. Just say stop. Stop. Right there? Yeah. You sure? Completely up to you. Yeah. All right. So we're going to take, um, here, we'll take here the queen of spades. Yeah. And I'll do this to the mic so we have headphones on. You could hear this. Usually I do this up to your ear, but yeah. you could hear. Okay. Rip you it hear that, apart. right? Yeah. And my sleeves are rolled up. So can you take that? Yeah. All right. Okay. So so I won't I won't leave this position, right? So if I take take the piece and this is the first trick that I showed showed my uh, my wife. So I'm taking the piece, I put it in my hand and blow on it whatever. Yeah. And see it see it, it vanishes. What the hell? And right? And so <laughs> and so that's what I did to my wife. And, but I haven't left this spot. Right. Right? I've been right. here this whole entire time. You guys can see on the cameras and, oh my God. and on the right. <laughs> Where's the most impossible place that that could go? Right, your your mic has been sitting there the whole entire time. Oh my God! Lift up, lift up your mic. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here! Oh, dude. Right, right. What? So, so the piece is under, 
and what and the hell? but there's a the thing like see if it matches. Fuck. Dude. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so that's 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 the first uh, that's the first thing I I showed my what? wife and like. How the fuck did that? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, oh my god, this shit blows me away. I I have no fucking idea how right? that happened and it bother I, I could tell it really bothers you yeah it does right because <laughs> <laughs> i mean i like i i feel like i want a logical explanation but but i also kind of don't because i feel like that ruins it. it ruins it and i don't i don't want to know the tricks because i still want to be amazed by the way it happens but god damn i'm blown away every time that's fucking insane right i'm looking at you the whole entire what and, like, and I don't... it's super fair and that's that's like the fairness of it right i'm still fucked up i mean it's it's i mean i'm you know the cameras are on the cameras are yeah. rolling. you know you're sitting know. there you're watching yeah. you know like fuck. uh you know the thing that that uh <laughs> <laughs> all right you gotta fuck me up this early into it now <laughs> right? i'm like now i'm just stuck on that thought right but but this is the thing too is like all the listeners probably think like all this stuff is set up mm -hmm. and i had to stop myself multiple times from telling you last night what i was going to do like you know, I I you know yeah. we didn't set anything up. No, I know. I like uh, your buddy was he was like, don't say it, don't tell him, don't tell him, right, like, right. don't tell me, dude, because I just want it. No, nothing is set up. I am being one hundred percent honest. That was fucked up. That that just ended up under the mic stand. I don't know how the hell that. Right. I still I have no idea how the fuck that happened. Yeah. But, um, but god damn, it's so cool. So right. so as you uh as you got into magic like you said you're young and your dad was showing you these kind of things you did you just kind of spend lots of time like i mean i imagine like they always say like the ten thousand hours rule like i imagine you spent a ton of time working on these tricks yeah man like, like like we we all do we all we all spend time doing stuff like you know we have no social lives and no friends yeah <laughs> so it's, but it's like, like it's like anybody you know like anybody in a band is playing the guitar right. a ton it's and, practice and, yeah. you know it's practice it's it's a lot of you know I'm, I'm at the point now like people react differently right there's people that don't like to be impressed there's you oh, know, right, the people right. that freak out and, and everything like that there's people that try to mess you up and everything and you know multiple times like we we mess up all the time i saw that a little bit last night there were some kids that were like trying to like grab your money and whatever while you're right. doing the stuff and it was like that was annoying right because you're like just just let them do like i like to get blown away by that like and yeah. and then be like and and like it literally feels like your brain blacks out because you're like wait I like missed a min I missed like a minute of time there right. where all that went down. You know, all the yeah. trickery went down and it's fun to kind of let yourself be involved in that. Yeah, yeah. And I was thinking about, you know, like when you were saying the guys that don't like to or guys or girls that don't like to let themselves. I was thinking about I I used to work at a haunted house like when I was young. And I always thought about it because, like, the big tough guys with their girlfriends would come in like, you ain't going to scare me, bro. Yeah. And then when you get them, like, because <laughs> I was I, I was the spot that I was, there was this huge, like, f scare thing that happened. And then after that, as soon as you, like, kind of regain your composure, I was right there. And that actually got people more than the big one because the big one you could kind of anticipate. And then the little one, like, you would see these big buff dudes, like, jump up and right. scream like yeah. little bitches. And, and it was like – and they just hated that they got scared, but it's sort of like the magic thing is like they they just don't want to allow it to be or don't want right. to be impressed. And, and and you know like everybody reacts differently. And and the thing is is like you know I don't claim what I do is real or anything. You know yeah. like if if it was then we would all be millionaires. You know right. like, yeah 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 yeah. But um but you know like there's there's a good story is um you know there's a a thing that I would do where I, I remember as a kid I would see David Blaine on TV. It was his first special, his Street Magic special, and he's like on, he's by the ocean, and he's like, think of somebody. And the girl <laughs> yeah. like thinks of somebody, and he's like, uh, he puts his hand on her heart, and he says like the name of the person that she's thinking of. And then she starts like crying, and he's like, he's okay. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. And, and I was like, dude, I'm totally gonna do that. So I was, hi <laughs> I was hired for a Halloween gig. Yeah. And uh, this girl, from what she was saying and how she was acting, like I knew she was gonna think of um, somebody that passed away. And I found out later that her dad just passed away like two weeks before. And so I said the person's name, I knew it was her dad. And uh, I put my hand 
on her heart and and i didn't know that this guy like I, I didn't know the guy was her dad you know and i said he's okay he's with you and she freaked out and Damn. ran and she thought that i could like speak to her wait how did you know it, it's just it, it it's just like the way that she was acting like i knew that i i, I knew that she thought of somebody that was that passed away and and it was somebody close to her yeah and stuff and and you know i did that and and she thought she was convinced that i could you know talk to her dad yeah and and stuff and so it's like it's a very thin line that you have to follow and and after that like i i never did that again like i i because i used to say think of a close friend family member it could be somebody that passed away think of anybody that you want and and just from what you said i knew that she was thinking of you know her dad that passed away and and stuff and it's like you know it's a thin line that you just feel like a little bit like yeah. it's too much like you it don't could be, want to mess with somebody i mean like what that. we do can be so convincing right yeah and uh and everything but you know it's it's just crazy but you know anyway back to to what we were saying is um how i got into it you know my my, my dad did st some stuff for me and then when i went to college uh, my mom would give me a hundred dollars a month to get food and I would get like a box of ramen noodles and, Oh yeah, <laughs> and I would spend the rest on magic and, uh, <laughs> and and I wasn't doing anything, but I was just like I wasn't doing anything with it. I wasn't doing shows. I just I was so bothered By how stuff was done like that would bother the shit out of me and uh, You mean trying to figure it out? Yeah. Yeah trying yeah. to figure it out. I didn't know how, I wanted to know how it was done. Yeah, and um and everything but you know there's different there's different types of magic you know there's like close up uh, which which what i did for you is is close up um you know taking the card ripping it um you know there's uh like that stuff is is crazy for me because like last night we went the one show we went to at the magic castle um it was like you know i mean it was like grand illusion sort of stuff right and like, kyle misty night yeah yeah it was really awesome it was super entertaining and and uh and Dude, i love the box that stuff thing, too like yeah the girl lays in the box and like cuts yeah. her in half and it, everything yeah. yeah he does the 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 new cut in half and then like they had a box at the top and like it had everything written on this piece of paper about the whole sh the show that people randomly like it was it was weird but so that is like you know this grand illusion kind of thing but like the close up stuff that you do like that it like fucks me up more because I'm like wait I was here and I was trying to pay attention to see what the hell was happening yeah and I couldn't figure it out you know like that like you said it bothered you so then you pursued it and and then you had to figure out how do these magic tricks work and how right. do i get into that and that i could see how it would be super addicting to go no i need to know this because this is awesome and it's so cool to be able to do that trick and and yeah. like how that man so okay so you're so you're doing that as you're growing up and you're in college and you're and you're figuring all this stuff out and then like did you like what kind of clicked and made you think hey i want to make a career of this and i want to you know i mean like you said eventually you end up you're we working with david copperfield and yeah and like that was a guy that you went you saw him you watched him make a cart appear on stage right. like that's insanity so then you're then all of a sudden like you know take me from from box of ramen noodles and <laughs> trying tricks to how did you get to like david cop yeah so i mean uh so i went to college and you know i went through some personal things and, and yeah you know we all do yeah and um and that kind of pushed me to do what i wanted to do like we all have these yeah ambitions and goals and and uh i grew up in westchester not the same Westchester as you, but Westchester, yeah. Ohio. Yeah, there you go. And um, <laughs> and uh, you know, I, I I just was staying at home, and I felt like you know, there's no opportunity out here, and uh, the magic community is so small. And I had a friend that was working for Copperfield, and um, and I ended up going to Vegas and and met David's manager and. He ended up getting me the job, and he, David does. I don't know if I told you this before, but David does 600 shows a year. Poof. And you would work. For, you just, you know, you'd work once a year. You'd work three months every single day, no days off, and Damn. um, and it's just like non. Two shows a day. Yeah, two shows every single day, and three shows on Saturday, 
and uh, it was just like nonstop during the holidays. You're doing three shows a day for a week. So you're getting like ten thousand hours of experience right. in like a year. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And and it was just like that. That was my life. Like I, I so I ended up, you know, I just left and I went to Vegas and I didn't know if I was gonna get a job, but I just went on a whim. Yeah. And uh, and I was staying in an empty apartment. A friend just moved out, and um, I was staying in an empty apartment on a blow up mattress in the middle of summer <laughs> in Vegas. There you go. And Sounds it was hot as balls. <laughs> and like I had no air conditioning. Yeah. So like even it better. was just, it was the worst, man. <laughs> and like you know, I was struggling. I was literally I was just staying in a room and I had no car. I was running out of money. I quit my job because I thought like I was going to get this job with Copperfield cuz cuz uh you know, Chris said, you know, you got the job, but I don't know when you're going to start. It could yeah, be right. a day, a week, could be like a month could be six months you know and i'm staying in this apartment like struggling yeah and uh and then he called me one day and and he offered me the job and i just like started working and um so i did that for two years and then ended up working for another company um did a couple tv shows yeah um, so wait how did you get on to the tv show like what wizard wars yeah was wizard wars so like uh my two friends justin flom and uh rick lax they created a show on sci-fi yeah and it only lasted two seasons but um but it was uh it was a show with penn and teller and they give you like random objects so it's kind of like the cooking show where they give you like you know yeah. some ingredients and you an just, old pork chop and right some right spice yeah, yeah. <laughs> so for me it was like i was a tutu uh dominoes a guitar and something else yeah so they're like they fly you in and and they um they give you a partner and they're like create something create like a two minute stage routine that would fool Penn and teller oh wow and uh it's quite a quite a tall order. right yeah and and, <laughs> and you know like on tv they made it look like you know they they can manipulate a lot of things <laughs> but right. um but you know they make it look like uh you know you have you know a, a couple hours to to create a routine but yeah you know, it's longer than that but um but yeah, man, it was it was a, a really cool experience. So what did you do with a guitar and a tutu? Yeah, so <laughs> <laughs> so with the tutus, we we pulled the tutus through our body. So like we started with the tutus behind us, and we pulled yeah. it through our body and went through our bodies. Um, with the guitar, we uh, we had a little suitcase that we put on the on the table, and we pulled out like three or four guitars from the from the suitcase. Oh, and wow. everything. So yeah, it was. Uh, it was really cool, man, and and it's like it's crazy because um, you'll come up with this routine, and they have to approve it. Like the producers have to approve it. Yeah. And like an hour before the show, they were like, "You can't do that," and so that changes the whole entire thing. Oh. So like we had to think of something. Why did they do that? Like just to just, just to because they're douchebags. <laughs> like, yeah, I but don't just know. to see if you could like if you yeah, could just react to see if we could do it. something else out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And um. And yeah, like you know, like they, you know, on TV, there's more that that happens than people see, you know. Yeah, right. Um, I mean, you work TV, and um, but wait, you're telling me it's not real? No, it's not real. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but you know, it's uh, you know, so I did, I did that, um, and then I was on uh, Pop TV, <laughs> which is, I don't, do you know Pop TV? Yeah, Pop well, TV uh, Shit's is, Creek was on it, right? Yeah, dude. Yeah, that show's <laughs> awesome. So, so it was like. Pop TV is like the station that, like, it's like channel number seven on cable yeah. where where you see what's on TV. Right, right, right. And yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. So of course it's, it's not gonna do good, <laughs> right? Yeah. And that what show was that? It was it was called uh, Don't Blink. So that was kind of like a David Blaine thing. Like you know they follow us with a camera. We're going down Hollywood Boulevard, and um, it was right when I think it was like American Idol. Yeah, like people thought like I was somebody from American Idol, so they were super disappointed when they found out like <laughs> I'm actually a magician. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know. But, yeah, but uh, you know, it, it was a cool experience, and um, and you know, like now I'm uh, you know, working Eric's show, like you know, operating camera, and well, I've got I had to ask before that, like, so like what 
like, what were you thinking to yourself? Like, okay, here I am eating ramen noodles, trying to figure out some of these tricks. And then flash to a couple years later, you're right with David Copperfield. And then you're doing stuff with Penn and Teller. Like, that has to be like, damn, this is a dream come true. Yeah, I, man. I've like... I, I've arrived in a way where you know you're you're in the you're in the company of you know the greats, and, right? And and I feel like that that's kind of everybody's dream. Like you know, um, like our friends C the CKY mm -hmm. band, like you know they're playing with Guns N' Roses and then they're playing with Metallica. Like that's like that moment where you're like, dude, fuck, you yeah. know, our band's doing something. Like I feel like that you know you had to have had this with Copperfield. Like I feel felt like I reached the top. Yeah, you know, like there's nobody higher than david yeah i mean nowadays like nobody i mean you know kids that are 21 20 years old they don't know who david copperfield is but like you know you know your parents know david um who david copperfield is and yeah and for me it felt like i reached the top I mean, it is. I feel you like know. that was the the magician that yeah. you knew the name. Like, obviously, David Blaine and Chris Angel and those guys came along after. But, right. But but David Copperfield is like the dude. And uh, so is he still doing a ton of shows? At yeah, Vegas he's still and, doing. He's still doing shows at the MGM. And he's like, yeah. he's nonstop working. Like that's all he knows. Yeah. And uh, and everything. But you know, like I had to, I had to just like move on. I had to do yeah, like, you had to take out new opportunities, yeah. and that's where like Wizard Wars and uh, and and Don't Blink came in, right? And, and you're doing that, and we yeah. all we all have goals, right? Like we all yeah. have things that we want to do, right? And and if I could do it, like anybody can do it, like legit, like anybody could do. What I and I'm nobody special, you know, like I'm I'm a nobody, but like you know, like I wouldn't you know, say that, but yeah, 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 yeah. like yeah. Like I mean, you're pretty. You, people know you, and like as we, you know, met with uh, what was it, uh, Danny Garcia? Garcia, yeah. Yeah, like I mean, that dude is, you know, he's creating all this stuff for Blaine and and uh, or right for yeah David for David Blaine. Blaine. And uh, and I mean, and, and you're in close company with him, and he's showing us tricks and doing yeah, things, man. and he's and he's like psyched on you because I I noticed that through the conversation, he's just psyched on the things that you're doing too, yeah. and and uh, so I mean, you're you're definitely in the mix with the people yeah. that are doing it, and it, and it definitely brought me places that i never thought i would go like you know i, I performed for jason statham yeah uh, steve-o yeah uh steve aoki um you know all these people and and it's kind of crazy with steve-o you know i thought like oh yeah it sure. is yeah dude. <laughs> I, I i ended up uh you know hitting him up and he was like yeah come over to my place and i was all pumped about it and i'm like yeah for sure i could fool him mm -hmm. like no doubt you know yeah. out, of, out of anybody in the world i could definitely fool steve-o you know yeah. it's so easy and I go over uh, to his place, me and my, like, I have a camera crew and, you know, knock on his door and he answers his door and his boxers and <laughs> he's like, hey man, like come inside and, you know, set up your stuff and I'm going to change and whatever. And, uh, you know, he's like super cool dude. Yeah. S super smart. Like I thought that I could. Oh, I could that's, yeah, that's him. an act. <laughs> and, 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 uh, he's a logical thinker yes he's like obviously like obviously if you put you know an ace in my hand and it changes to something else like another card two of spades obviously you had to switch it without me seeing it yeah like you know so i had to do some legit stuff and we'll show this video afterwards um i took a acupuncture needle and pushed it through my hand and uh and it you know goes through my hand and i pull it out and there's no hole in my hand and stuff but yeah uh, oh wow but yeah. you know like for for steve-o is like i had to do something legit that i i, I thought he would appreciate and yeah. um and stuff and it was it was really cool and you really got and you got him you yeah, him. yeah yeah <laughs> yeah yeah he, he loved yeah. it he's like that's the one man like that was that was really cool and um and you know like rick Kosick, he got me a gig at um a uh, uh comedy club yeah and rick's a great guy man like he and he's he's given me like some really good advice over the years you know like i was always kind of the guy that had to try and play it safe and rick was like you just got to go out and do it like if you yeah. want to go do something just go out and 
do it. Yeah, and he's know? definitely a dude that did that, yeah. you know, like with Big Brother. And I mean, I had him on the podcast mm -hmm. uh, early on, and yeah, he just went out and put himself in the position to get awesome photos and to be there to capture mm -hmm. some of the, you know, best shit that's happened in skateboarding and then obviously Jackass and all that. Right. So yeah, I mean, it's great advice to just, you know, like if you have a dream, just go for it rather than sitting around like thinking what could go wrong or, or you know, ha playing it safe. It's right. like, just go for it. And we all, I mean, this is the thing too that like we have to keep in mind is we all start at the same place yeah you know like we're all we all start at the same place whether how successful you are is up to you yeah exactly and I, and I think that there's also some level of like um you know when you see somebody and like when i see you do the tricks that i see you do it's like holy shit you know this guy's just got that talent and and really it's like yeah, there's some of that involved, but there's a lot of hard work and a lot of effort that goes into it that I don't see. Right. And if I did see every day of how much you're working at this thing, it would be like, oh, okay. But I, I know that from having to do this stuff myself, like with, with filmmaking or whatever. Like, it's a long journey. You're, you're, you're working at it. You're trying new things. You're learning new things. Um, so I, I can understand that, yeah, you put a lot of effort into this and you've been doing this for a long time, and, and that's why. So, like, nobody gets anywhere by just, like, hey, I showed up. I'm talented. This right is it you yeah, know it's right. like well that dude can act like that but he's been working at it really hard or that girl has been doing shit behind closed doors and you don't even know how long she's been right. working at it you know so I think that that is involved and that's something that um, maybe people don't realize you know when they're when they're first starting out because you're afraid to go after your dreams or you're afraid to try that stuff because you think like oh this person's already ahead of me what's the use mm -hmm. or or why should I even try that it's like well at some point that person that you that you're blown away by was sitting there just like you are trying to try something and afraid to do it you right know? Right. And and just like getting past that, getting through that and going after it is is kind of all you have to do. I I mean, I, I laugh and and and, uh, and and think to myself, like, dude, like we were just jumping off roofs when we were little kids into bushes. And then all right. of a sudden, you know, the uh, you know, we went on this crazy ride of of, uh, you know, all that insanity with jackass people of Bam and all that. And like I could have never predicted that. But right. We were just doing stuff. We were trying to entertain each other, and in you know, in the just mix of on. that, people were other people were entertained, and then it and then it worked, and, right. and yeah, and and you know, I wouldn't say like, man, I, I set out to try to be the biggest dumbass there is, right. but you know, but but somehow it worked yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's, uh, it's it's really and and it's really cool to see that, like you know, like I I mean, I grew up watching you guys on TV, and like yeah. You know, it's cool, cool to meet you guys in person and and see how like you know humble you guys are. And you know, we all move on to like you know other things and stuff. You know, yeah. like we're both married. Yeah. You, you know, oh yeah. Like, I don't know how that happened. Who thought but... about that? <laughs> yeah, you know? yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, yeah, you probably tricked her into right, it. Right, I, I did. <laughs> I did, man. I definitely did. But uh, me and the jock strap must have turned mine <laughs> right. on. Yeah. <laughs> but talking about jock straps. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. I got uh, I got some good shit stories to talk to. Talk oh to yeah, yeah, about, dude. Man. You come on the bathroom I, break I, podcast. Yeah, you gotta yeah. Have I, a gotta, shit I gotta share some good <laughs> stories. We have some guys out in the in the theater, Eric and. And yeah, stuff. I don't know if they could hear us, but um, it's yeah. gonna be super embarrassing because I haven't yeah. told anyone. You gotta about embarrass this, yourself, man. So, <laughs> but fuck it. Yeah, right. Go for it. So, um, so in magic, you know, you want, you want. For me, it's like you got to do what it takes. Yeah. Right. So, um, so back in the day, you know, Chris Angel just started, and he was a huge hit on uh, on TV, and you know, everybody knew Chris Angel and. He used to do this trick where he would swallow a string and like pull it out of his eye, right? Yeah. And um, and so I was like, man, like I'm, I, I want to do something like that, you know? So I ended up doing a trick where I, I learned how to do a trick where I swallow a string and I pull it out of my stomach, right? Why? And, and it looks like a hair, but but I, I pull the string the string out yeah. of my stomach and it looks like it's coming out and everything. And obviously it's you know not the same string. You know, I'm not gonna tell how I, how I pulled it out of my stomach, but um, but usually like you take you you take a string, you swallow it, and uh, and you I ended up just swallowing the string, <laughs> you know, because I'm like I want this to look like 
legit yeah you know, show my my mouth empty and everything i'm at this i'm at this uh this place called the green in dayton ohio i used to do magic there yeah and uh i'm you know i was single at the time i met this this chick that was like super hot so she's like hey can you she knew i did magic so she's like hey can you do that trick like chris angel where you like take a string and pull out your eye and i'm like set up for this trick to do it like pull out of my stomach and uh i take the string swallow it and uh and you know pull it out of my stomach and everything but this is the thing this experience you know taught me never to swallow the string <laughs> right <laughs> so, it sounds good with a hot know, girl involved yeah, man. shit story right right pulling so, it out of here. <laughs> yeah dude so i'm i'm you know a week later i'm i'm like you know on the toilet taking a shit and like i feel this like weird sensation you know and uh i'm like what the, what the f like you know I, I i push and i don't hear the you know the little drip you know hitting the water you know? yeah I don't know what the hell and i feel it's like something i stand up and i have a string coming out of my asshole <laughs> and on the end of the string is a turd <laughs> yeah and it's like stuck and it's Dude. like swinging like a uh, that's like, I'm like, Whoa. like you went fishing for a <laughs> right. piece of shit yeah <laughs> <laughs> and 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 you know like after that i'm like oh, okay I, I can never like swallow the <laughs> string anymore because like that's dude hilarious. it was the freaking you just worst, got a man. turd on a string hanging yeah, out of your man. ass and like it was, it was <laughs> so what did so you have to do did you have bad. to like cut it off or no no like i, I ended up just you get, uh, like get it. the uh, proper yeah. terminology for your ass the turd <laughs> cutter right. so you had to like snip the string right. so the shit would 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 cut loose i just freaking like i just pushed a little harder and finally it just okay. fell on the floor and i'm like, Ugh. Yeah. And like <laughs> <laughs> so there's so. shit just on the floor and, and you're uh yeah that's that's crazy yeah so okay so damn dude all right well that's a pretty good uh shit story yeah Some string Super hanging embarrassing. Out i didn't get permission <laughs> from the wife to tell that one <laughs> <laughs> so there was like a turd like on the floor dude is and you had i don't even want to like... talk about it anymore <laughs> i want to i want to, to. I wanna dig into this <laughs> <laughs> That's so good. You should have magically I mean, I cleaned mean, that shit dude, up you, off the floor. You, you did shit while running full speed. Yeah. So I guess, like, you know, that's not that bad. No, no, right? not at all. So, I mean, hey, I'm not embarrassed by it. But right. the thing is, I always look at it like this. You just got to do it. You mm -hmm. know, like like uh, everybody shits. So so ev everybody a lot of shit. people get embarrassed by it. But uh, but just own it. You know, like, yeah. if you shit your pants, just own it. You right. Know? And, then, and then it's like, like own it like Neil Diamond, like, <laughs> like Benji will say, you know. It's like, just you got you to gotta pretend like you're Neil Diamond, even if you got a hot steaming load in your yeah. pants. Yep. But uh, but dude, that's hilarious. So okay, so um, I mean, it's pretty it's pretty awesome to hear your whole story through magic, and um, you know, and, and and realize that you know you you've gotten to live out some of the dreams of working with David Copperfield, working with Penn and Teller, uh, and doing all these incredible things. You know, you got a free pass into the Magic Castle whenever you want. You brought me there last night. Yeah. That was so much fun, and it was so cool to see witness all of that. Um, I I wondered if there's any way that we might be able to. End the show with like a couple little yeah, you know, sort of things that I could, you know, maybe film a little bit of you doing a couple tricks. Yeah, and, so we're uh, gonna have we're, we're gonna have like a rab a rab cam. Okay, set and up that's the gonna rab be cam. Rab's, that's gonna be a rab's yeah. point of view. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> and stuff. So it's gonna be it's gonna be a good time, man. And and I'm gonna have my friend Eric uh, show some stuff. And okay, cool. And Eric, uh, you know, he's. Like you know, one of the top creators in the world, creating effects and and a super great guy. And you guys have to check out his his website, Eric Jones. Is it Eric Jones Magic dot com or Eric Jones? Yeah, Eric Jones Magic dot com. Yeah. Um, and, and we gotta check you out on check uh, out. Instagram yeah, yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So my Instagram is Chris underscore Oberly O B E R L E. Yeah. Um, or, and you know, request me on Facebook. I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> cool. Whatever. I'll link you on that with the uh, with the episode. But thanks for listening to the Bathroom Break podcast. We're gonna do some some magic here in a second to end the thing. And uh, thanks com coming on, brother. Yeah, man. Thanks for having me, bro. Yeah. I really appreciate it. Hell yeah. Nice. This is the worst part. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they like burn your fucking mouth. <laughs> no, no, no. oh, this is the worst part. I just ate fire. All right. But it's what I'm willing <laughs> to do. <laughs>
going to Steve's house right now for Jackass. We're going to be doing some stuff for him. Now drop whatever one you want. There's <laughs> a whole thought process. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> My right arm's stronger, and I want to give my left arm a little more right. workout so I, can, so I can catch up. <laughs> All right. So here, I'm gonna take I'm gonna take the X. Okay. Oh shit. Okay. I'm gonna be impressed as fuck. <laughs> All right. Oh. I'm impressed as see, fuck. See, see, see if you can. See, we should we warm up. Maybe. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, dude. Fuck yeah. me. That's crucial. Yeah. Because like, I mean, come on. <laughs> That's the coolest magic trick someone has done to me. And I want you guys to decide if this is real or just a trick, all right? Looking pretty real so Looking far. So far. Yeah. Trick with my face. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, come on! Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, damn! Hot chocolate, super clean. Is this real or not? Chris is gonna kill it here. I'm gonna kill it. He's already blown people's minds. Yes. It's already happened. Now it's won't. happening. She left her mind on the sidewalk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you tear that card up. Of my mouth. Is it like, uh, uh, is it like uh, yeah, say yeah. it in your mind over and over again? Gabe? Yeah. Is it Gabe? Yeah, it's Gabe. Yeah? What was the card? What was the card? Uh, seven of diamonds. Oh, it wasn't the king. Wasn't the king? <laughs> Dude, get the fuck out of here. No, but hold on. Go back to the Gabe thing. Yes, we're gonna do is... oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> really, like burned your fucking <laughs> mouth. Oh, that was the worst part. I just ate fire. All right, but it's what I'm willing to do. So here, you might you might feel this here. Oh, I'll show my mouth. All right. All right. Okay. And you might feel this. You can smell it, right? Kind of... Yeah. That does nothing. <laughs> People think it does something, yeah. but it doesn't. Good it's all for show. <laughs> but open, open up the matchbook. What? And it's still connected, right? Yeah. Fuck. Dude. <laughs> what? <laughs> and this I, was, I was fucking holding that the whole time. <laughs> here, here, hold on to it real tight. So real yeah. tight. Uh, I'll show you guys. I'll show you that all these are are mixed. Wait, I love how we just quit, keep moving to the next right. thing when I'm still fucked up <laughs> over the last thing. You just reach in and touch one. It doesn't matter which one. 
Okay. Are you okay? Take yeah. that. Mm -hmm. All right. Wait, so this, do you want to see it? Yeah, I can see it. I've seen the, the trick before. So here, so I want you to uh, can we do this. Just squeeze. <laughs> right. What? Right. Now, Chris, you could have taken any card you wanted. When yeah. you took the, it was the king of spades. Yeah. Would that be crazy if the king of spades was inside the matchbook? <laughs> that was You've been holding it in your hand the whole time. <laughs> I don't even. He's like want scared. He's I don't scared even to want open to see up. this. <laughs> <laughs> so you're saying, open it? Yeah, open it up. <laughs> Fuck, dude. I think I need to go to the fuck home. <laughs> yeah, you know? God damn. Dude, that's awesome yeah, shit. Yeah. That's yeah. Fucking... So it, think... does, it feels like like I blacked out because I'm like sitting there holding it. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, there's like this feeling of like, wait, I just, like, it's like amnesia. Like, did something happen when I wasn't looking because I was fucking holding it? That's it. Dunzo. Dude, all right. Well, this has been the Bathroom Break Podcast Extras with magician Chris Overly, and I just got fucked up. Dude, my head is fucked. I got to drive home and try and think about this shit. <laughs> Crying on your way home. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm a little bit scared. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Close your eyes real tight and then blow as hard as you can and see if you can do it longer than me. I mean, this is, and this is going to be. I guarantee you I can't. Just try. I, my cat could blow longer than me. <laughs> just try. Just try. Oh. <laughs> Dick move. That was not a trick at all. That was not a trick. That was not a trick. Do I have shit on my face? A little bit. If we put a clown nose.